Hello folks, thank you for tuning in. I've heard a lot of talk in regard to radio transceivers that have fallen prey to damaged RF output transistors. Many operators blame the radio manufacturers for these issues, but I wonder how much of the problem stems from incorrect use of the radios after the point of sale. Radio transmitters are designed to work with antenna systems that are carefully matched to the requirements of the transmitter design. In most cases with amateur radio equipment, the antenna system needs to present a 50 ohm impedance to the radio's antenna jack. If you are not giving the transmitter what it is designed to work with, you can usually expect trouble. Given the aforementioned, you can expect to dramatically decrease the chance of your transmitter being damaged by being aware of some key facts in regard to your antenna system. Here is what you need to know and practice. Number one, understand your antenna system consists of not just the antenna, but also everything that is plugged into the antenna jack on the transceiver. This includes coaxial cables, coax connectors and couplers, antenna tuners, SWR and power output meters and amplifiers. It's very important to know that this entire system is working the way it should. Two, understand the concern in regard to reflected RF power. Reflected RF power is measured by what is called the standing wave ratio, often referred to as SWR. Very simply put, SWR is that percentage of RF power that the transmitter sends out to the antenna, but which does not get radiated by the antenna, but instead travels back down the coax and into the antenna jack on the radio. This phenomenon occurs when the antenna system does not present a perfect impedance match to the transmitter. When the SWR is high enough, it's an indication that a problem exists which could possibly damage the transmitter. 3. Always use instrumentation to keep aware of your SWR. You need to watch this to know if and when the amount of reflected power goes too high. If your transceiver has the ability to switch the meter on the display between RF power output and SWR, always keep it showing SWR. Now that you can see the SWR reading when you transmit, keep an eye on it as you operate. A good rule of thumb is to consider any SWR higher than 1.5 to 1 unacceptable. It is true that some transceivers have built-in high SWR protection, but I recommend that you do not trust that circuitry to step in and protect your radio, since you can control the quality of your antenna system. 4. Know the resonant frequency range of your antennas. Write these down and post them in a visible location in your shack if need be. That way, you will know if a high SWR reading is expected or unexpected when you encounter it. If you are operating outside of the resonant range of your antenna, use a tuner to correct the SWR situation, or avoid working in that section of the band. 5. Confirm that all coaxial cables and devices attached to the feed line are in good working order. Check to see that all coax connectors on both the cables and other devices, like SWR meters, antenna switches, and lightning arresters, have been properly soldered and have good structural stability. A dummy load can help you with off-the-air testing of coax and devices. Coaxial cable looks strong, but the truth is it can be easily damaged. Ensure that your feed line is out of harm's way. Leaving your feed line where it can be stepped on, pulled, chewed by critters, and be subject to adverse weather without protection is an invitation to future trouble. 6. Every time you power on your station, confirm the antenna system is working well before starting to operate. Just because it was working well yesterday does not mean it will be working well today. 7. If you must use a tuner, consider using a manual tuner. Automatic tuners are fast and easy, but in many cases automatic tuners will drive the SWR very high before finally finding a good match. You don't have any control over the auto-tune process, as you do with a manual tuner. Manual tuners can be slowly and carefully operated to find the best setting 
without subjecting your transmitter to dangerously high SWR. Eight, get into the habit of disconnecting your transceiver from the antenna system after using the radio. I've witnessed electrical arcing across a PL259 connector's coupling ring and center conductor on a disconnected feed line in my shack. The arcing was caused by windy weather. If the transceiver had been connected, extensive damage would have been the result. A lightning arrestor might help that situation, but I believe it's still good practice to physically disconnect the transceiver between uses. On this note, let's not forget lightning itself. The best protection for your rig against lightning damage is to unplug the antenna system during storms. It's also a good idea to disconnect any AC to DC power supplies and peripheral equipment too. Don't give excessive electricity a path into the rig. These best practices will help keep your precious gear trouble free. If I've forgotten or not listed anything that you think is important, please feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments below. Thank you for watching. As always, if you like my video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. 73 from Tracy, VE3TWM.